Once you have chosen your models, you are ready to evaluate how the data mining results can help you achieve your business objectives. At this stage in the project, you have built a model or models that appear to be high, have high quality from a data analysis perspective. Before writing final reports and deploying the model, it's going to be important to more thoroughly evaluate the model and review the steps executed to construct the model to be certain that it properly achieves the business objectives. The key aim is to determine if there is some important business issue that has not been sufficiently considered. At the end of this phase, a decision is going to be made on how to use the data mining results. In this section, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how to use the evaluation node. And the evaluation node is going to help us with the general aspect or the general phase of evaluation. And then we're going to talk about how to score new data and how to export those results over to another application. And this is going to help us with the general phase of deployment. As was just mentioned, the evaluation node is going to help us with the evaluation phase to further evaluate the model or models that we've built. Specifically in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the evaluation node and this node allows us to create several different types of graphs that can further help evaluate any models that we've built. And specifically, we're going to take a look at the results of a gains chart so we can see how this could potentially help us to evaluate our models. And then we're also going to look at the result of a lift chart and see how this also helps us evaluate models as well. Likewise, when it comes to deployment, creation of the model is not generally the end of the project. Even if the purpose of the model is to increase knowledge of the data, the knowledge gained will need to be organized and presented in a way that the organization can use for decision making. So in essentially all projects, a final report will need to be produced and distributed. The most critical is the deployment of the model to make predictions and create scores against new data. Now this might be relatively easy if it's done within the data mining software, or it can be more complex if the model is applied directly against an existing database. In this example, we're going to show how to use the evaluation node to further evaluate models that you've built. Again, this is only one aspect of the evaluation phase. As I've mentioned before, part of the evaluation phase is really how well are we addressing the business issues, the business objectives that we had with the project. So to use an evaluation node, what we're going to do here is we've already brought in the evaluation stream. You can see it's a stream that we had previously created. I'm going to scroll over towards the end here. Here we have the two models that we've created as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the graphs palette and I'm going to connect my second generated model to an evaluation node. Notice that the evaluation nodes automatically knows, knows what it's going to be evaluating. I'm going to edit the evaluation node. And here what we're going to do is we first need to specify what type of chart we want to create. The evaluation node, as you can see, has several different types of graphs that you can create. In this example, we're going to create a gains chart, but later on I'll show you how to create a lift chart. So we're going to create a gains chart. The cumulative plot is going to be the result of your model. The baseline model is going to be basically an at chance model that's just showing you what predictions would look like if they were made at chance. And we're also going to include the best line option. This is a perfect prediction model. This is a model that's not making any errors in its predictions. Also notice that we could also include, a, we're going to split the data by partition. And then the level of detail that we're going to see is we're going to see everything at the percentile level. But we certainly could change that as well if we'd like. Notice that there are other types of criteria that you could use as well. And we'll talk about those briefly in a little bit. I'm going to click on the run button here. And I'm just going to expand the size of this graph. So notice that we've split the data based on partition. So over on the left-hand side, we have results for the training data set. On the right-hand side, we have results for the testing data set. Now, one of the first things that we want to do is we want to make sure that we have similar results for both training and testing. And here, the results look fairly similar. If you saw that the results were quite different, then that would be problematic because again, you want to make sure that the model works well, not just on the training data set that was used to build the model, but also on the testing data set because that's really a real evaluation of the model in terms of how the model is going to do with unseen data. The next thing to notice is that notice that we're only looking at one category of our outcome field. We're looking at when we're predicting that the, that the person's income category was over $50,000. Other things to notice here, 
we have four different models in each one of our graphs. We have this red line, which is the baseline model. This is the model that's predicting that chance. We also have the blue line, which is the perfect prediction model. And then we have the green and this kind of yellow brown looking color. The green is the chain model. The brown looking color, yellow color is um, the, the cart model. Now, other things to notice here. On the y-axis, notice that we have percent gained. We have values from zero all the way to 100%. And what that's telling us is that when you're at zero, you have correctly identified 0% of the people that have an income greater than $50,000. When you're at 100%, you have identified 100% of the people that have income greater than $50,000. Now on the x-axis, we also have values that range from zero to 100%. But here what we have is we have the percent of data if it's and is, as it's ordered based on confidence. So those people that have the lower values here, those are the cases that we are the most confident in our prediction that they are, that they ha are making more than $50,000. Those cases over by the 100%, those are the people that we're least confident in our prediction that they're making over $50,000. Now, let's take a look at these different models and what they're predicting. If we look at the baseline model, when we've gone through the first 20% of the, the data, we have identified 20% of the people that are making over $50,000. As we've gone over 60% of the data, we have identified 60% of the people that are making over $50,000 and so on. When we've gone through the entire data set, we have found 100% of the people that are making over $50,000. Again, this model is just predicting that chance. Notice the perfect prediction model. Notice the perfect prediction model is very steep. And once we've gone through about 32, 33% of the data, notice that we have identified 100% of the people that are making over $50,000. Now, why is that the case? And then, then at that point, and then it flattens out. It flattens out because it can no longer identify any more people that are making over $50,000 because there are no more people that are making over that amount of money. Now, why does it max out at about 32, 33%? Well, if I minimize this for a second and I go back into my shade model, for example, and I'm going to go over to the viewer tab. I'll scroll over a little bit here. Notice that about 32% of the sample has over, is making over $50,000. So that's where it's identified 100% of those people that are over the $50,000 mark. Okay, so that's where it gets that number. Close out of there. And now I'm just going to open up the graph again. So that's where we get this information. We wanna see our model follow the perfect prediction model as much as possible. And notice that it does. It does, you know, for a fair amount of the time, all the way to, I don't know, maybe about the 32 percentile. And at that point, we have found about 71 percent of the cases that are making over $50,000. And then we start to just kind of level out. Notice that both of the models that we built are doing about the same job in terms of accuracy. But then there seems to be some slight advantage between the Chade model over the CART model. Why is that? Well, most likely it's because the chain model, as we saw, had many more rules. And so therefore there were some additional rules that still captured some of these folks that had, um, that were making over $50,000, whereas the cart model ran out of rules. So ideally what we want to do is we want to compare models in terms of the quality of the rules. You know, for example, we would ideally like to see models that have some rules that have a high degree of accuracy in terms of predicting a particular category. And here we see that, you know, both models had about uh, the same quality of types of uh, rules that were found. But again, then the chain model continued to still be, be able to predict some of these additional cases, whereas the cart model basically ran out of rules. And then at that point, it was just basically predicting that chance. Now, sometimes you'll hear the term area under the curve. That's this area here. This is the how much better your model is in a baseline model than a chance model. And that's the area under the curve. The bigger that number is, the better that model is in general compared to a baseline model. This is an area where we still could improve. Obviously, we did not have perfect predictions. So again, this is the way you also start to evaluate models. Let me close out of this window for a second and I'll show you something else. I'm going to edit the evaluation note again. Notice that I had only looked at the first category of the value of of my outcome field. If I wanted to look at another category, I could. To do that, I would go over to the options tab. Here I'm going to define what I want to define as a hit. I could also define different business rules or how to score my results and things like that. So I'm going to click on user define hit. 
and I'm going to specify my condition for a hit. And here I'm going to change from the general function group over to all functions, and I'm going to look for the uh, at target function. There it is. This function allows me to specify what I want my target to be in my evaluation node. So I'm going to put that into the expression builder. I'll click OK. Oh, sorry, uh, equal sign. Then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here, and I'm just going to specify what I want to be my new target. So I'll just click on any one of these prediction variables. I'll click on the field values button. I'm going to select the less than $50,000 group. I'll select that. I'll click insert. We're all set. I'll click OK. And now I've specified that my new target is going to be those people that are making less than $50,000. I'll click on run. And again, I'll expand the graph here. Notice the same kind of graph, but now we're looking at the less than $50,000 group. Notice that the perfect prediction model doesn't max out until we get to about that 68% or so. Why is it 68%? Well, because 32% of the sample was making over $50,000. So this is the other group. And then again, at that point, the baseline model, or sorry, the, the perfect prediction model maxes out. Here we can see that there is a slight difference in terms of quality of rules between the Chade and the CART model. You can see that there's a little bit of a gap here. They're not quite right on top of each other like they were before. So again, it seems as though potentially the chain model might be a little better than the, uh, than the cart model. And again, now we're looking at the other category. Let me just show you one last graph. I'm going to close out of this window and I'm going to edit the evaluation node. I'm just going to use the default target, which is the first category. I'll click on the plot tab. And rather than create a gains chart, I'm going to choose a lift chart. Notice there's also possibilities of creating a profit chart, a return on investment, things like that, where we could specify things like costs and revenue and, and that kind of thing. But we're going to create a lift chart. And a lift chart, what it does, is it shows you improvement in expected return over no model. So if I run this, and I'll expand my graphs here and make them a little bit bigger, you can start to see, again, that the data is broken up into training and testing data sets, so you want to make sure that the results are similar. On the x-axis, the data is arranged the same way as it was on a gains chart. It's arranged in terms of confidence. So those people that were the most confident are in the over $50,000 group are over by the zero. Those people who were the least confident in our prediction are over by the 100%. And then what we have on the y-axis is we have the lift. So what this is telling us, for example, is that if we chose the top 20%, the 20th percentile, we have a lift of about 3.1 in terms of our perfect prediction model. So it's telling us the perfect prediction model is about 3.1 times better than the baseline model, okay? So what people use lift charts for is oftentimes they'll use it in market research where you know you can't send information to all of your customers. So then you specify, well, you know what, if I built a model, and I sent it to those people that are most likely to go for this promotion promotion. How much better is my baseline? So how much better is my model than a model where I just send it to a 20% of random customers as opposed to the customers that are most likely to buy? And so here, for example, we see that at the 20th percentile, both the Chade and the Cart model are equivalent. So they're about uh, 2.5 times better than a baseline model. Then we see at the 40% mark, we have a bit of a difference, not uh, a huge amount, but it's some difference between the uh, both the Chade and, and the CART model. Oftentimes, there may be a big difference between one model and the other, depending on different percentiles that you've specified, you know, how much, uh, how much time and funds you may have for a different marketing campaign and things like, things like that. I'll close out of this window. And again, those are just two examples of how you can use the evaluation node to further help you evaluate any models that you've built.